PK here for PK's Retro Reviews. Today I'm here to talk about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the NES. Which one, you ask? All of them. Also, I want to give a special shout out to everyone on YouTube who's reviewed this, the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for NES and its sequels. It's been reviewed a lot. And I mean a lot. I just felt that I could bring my own take on the Turtles franchise on the NES. So here's a short list of some YouTubers who have made some pretty awesome TMNT NES reviews. First up we got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the NES. It was based on the 1987 TV series, which was in its third season during the game's original release. And it has the style of the original comics, especially on the front cover, which shows all the Ninja Turtles with red bandanas, which was how the comic was. It wasn't until the TV show came along that they gave them different colored bandanas. The game was published by Ultra Games, which was a Konami Shell subsidiary. Konami could only make five games per year for the NES. Ultra Games was their way around it. It was ported to various home computer platforms in 1990, including the Commodore 64, the ZX Spectrum, and the Amiga. This game sold 4 million copies. It is the seventh all-time best-selling NES game. It's only behind the Super Mario Bros. trilogy, Tetris, Zelda 1, and 2. It was the 1989 Nintendo Power Game of the Year. So let's first, let's get to the gameplay. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the NES is a top-down, much like a lot of other games. It also is a side-scroller. Very, very similar to another game that came out a year before. That's right, Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. Zelda 2 actually was Nintendo Power's 1988 Game of the Year. Often this game is criticized for having way too many enemies on the screen at once. And I agree with them on that. Here you fight Bebop, who's a very easy boss. Oh, I really hate that noise. It reminds me of something else. I can't remember what it's... Oh, yeah. Another similarity between it and Zelda. One thing that was really cool about this game is you could actually change the different the different turtles. You could change to any of them. I wish they had kept that in the second game. That would have been nice on if you were playing one player, of course. Alright, here's where we have to rescue April from Rocksteady. Of course, using Donatello's bow, the old bow trick. It's very easy. It's very common knowledge. I think everyone knows about that. Oh yes, the area before the dam. This has a ridiculous amount of enemies on it. It's uh, the Chainsaw Maniac. I remember him. What episode was he in? Alright, I clearly made that episode up and it never happened. Another thing, this game is quite commonly criticized for its jumping. The jumping aspects of this game can be quite difficult. Some of it's bad programming, some of it's just challenging, honestly. Here we got the Hudson River near the Holland Tunnel, aka the dam. You gotta defuse eight bombs and you got a time limit. There's electric seaweed and of course seaweed they'll eat you. Well, one thing people don't talk about though is, you know, everybody says, oh you have such a time limit it makes it so hard. Yeah, you're gonna lose some turtles of course, but here's the thing. If you die, you don't have to go back and set set you know diffuse each individual bomb just the ones you missed from last time which is something that hasn't brought up a lot in most reviews I, I really wanted to address that another aspect I really loved about this game was power-ups the stars the triple stars boomerangs the Kai gun which just decimated everything what an awesome thing I wish they had kept that in other games the power-ups another great aspect of this game you get to drive the turtle wagon you get to drive the turtle wagon you can mow down foot soldiers. I mean, what more could a guy ask for? I mean, I wish you could have driven the turtle van in other of the NES incarnations. That would have been pretty awesome. That, folks, is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Good points? Well, 
You get to play as all four turtles, and you can pl switch during gameplay, and that's pretty cool. You get power-ups, you get to drive the turtle wagon. It's got multifaceted gameplay. I mean, you got the top-down, you got the side-scrolling, you got driving. That's pretty awesome. The bad points. Well, there is some bad programming issues, especially in some of the jumps in the ceiling areas. The electric seaweed really sucks. And sometimes there's just too many enemies on, on one screen, which causes it to flash, actually, sometimes. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was a product of its time. The Turtles phenomenon was in full force, and Konami needed to get a game out and get it on it quick. And this is what we got. And hey, it paved the way for more Turtles games to come out because people bought it. It outsold the next few NES games all combined, so. And it used some similar gameplay to Zelda 2, which was Nintendo Power's 88 game of the year, so. And it helped because obviously it brought Turtles next to, the, to that level in video gaming. The game, this game was criticized often for its difficult gameplay. Here's the reality, folks. Games were hard back then. Ninja Gaiden, Castlevania, for example, were hard games. Everybody knew it. Now people look at them in retrospect as good games. Overall, I give it a C+. It wasn't the best Turtles game in the franchise, but it wasn't horrible either, by any means. And like I said, it paved the way for more Turtles games. Up next, my personal favorite Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game on the NES. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Arcade, or Turtles 2 the Arcade Game as I used to call it, was one of my favorite games growing up as a kid. I used to play this all the time. I mean, all the time. I have really fond memories of this game. You know, it was a great beat-em-up. I mean, I, as a kid I loved games like Double Dragon and stuff like that. And I love, of course, the other Turtles game as well. But this game had it all, you know. I mean, it had... You know, I loved the cartoon, and me and a lot of my friends absolutely loved the cartoon. So to have a game that had so many of the same villains from the cartoon in it was really cool. I mean, this was just amazing. This was just like the cartoon was. In fact, the original arcade game was actually based on the first five episodes of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles of the first season. So let's take a look at some gameplay for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game. Turtles 2 The Arcade Game is the most well-known port of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Arcade Game 1989. It's called Turtles 2 on the NES to distinguish itself from the previous version. In the Japan, the game is just known as Turtles The Arcade Game because the previous NES Turtles game had a different title in Japan. That was called Fierce Turtle Ninja Legend, which is pretty cool, distinguishing itself from previous re the previous released Turtles game for the NES. Another really great feature in this game is you could use the environment to destroy your enemies. I'm gonna get that girl. Ah, yeah, I remember doing that. Another really interesting aspect of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game, was it was one of the first games that ever had product placement. Yes, product placement in its game. And what was really unique, on the front cover, it even says you can get a free personal pan pizza from Pizza Hut inside. Yeah, here's the instruction booklet, and on the back, free personal pan pizza from Pizza Hut. I, as a young, precocious youth, actually used one of these said, said coupons and got myself a personal pan pizza from Pizza Hut for free. And it was pretty delicious, as I recall. Oh man, I loved Pizza Hut as a kid. And I tell you, Ninja Turtles made me just love Pizza Hut even more. Good quality corporate brainwashing at its finest. It could be worse. At least they didn't make an app or something for a video game system to order pizza. That'd be so lame. The graphics in this game are scaled down a little compared to the arcade version, and there's only two players instead of four like the original arcade had. Another great aspect of this game compared to the previous Turtles game was that you had more than one attack. Now you had the you know the standard attack, and then if you hit A and B at the same time, you had a double attack, which would could kill a foot soldier in one single shot, which was really great. This particular port also had two new villains added to the game, Tora the Blizzard Beast and Shogun the Robotic Samurai, both bounty hunters sent by Shredder to kill the turtles. Also, there's an additional scene where you fight Baxter Stockman the Fly version as opposed to fighting Bebop and Rocksteady together in this particular area. 
If this had been a brand new game and been, had been on a next generation console, I'm sure these levels and features would have been unlockable in a very different kind of way. Probably something like this. This game actually was slated for release on the Virtual Console, but was quietly cancelled by Nintendo. I guess they didn't want to pay Konami and Pizza Hut royalties every time they someone downloaded this game, obviously. Here's a little G Wiz info for you. This game actually has some references to the comic book. The first scene in the fire at April's apartment, this happens in the first movie and the 2003 cartoon, but never the 1987 version. At the parking lot scene, a TGRI logo can be seen on one of the vans, and in the 1987 animated show, there is no TGRI. Interestingly enough, the manual for this game describes the story as if the game is a sequel to the first movie, mentioning Shredder falling into a garbage truck where he was seemingly crushed, which is at odds with the proliferation of villains from the cartoon series and Shredder being able to enlist warriors from outer space. And there you have it folks, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 the arcade game. Quite often this game is compared to Ninja Turtles the arcade game which it is a port of. Oftentimes it is criticized for being you know graphically inferior which it is nobody's you know but it's Nintendo it's an 8-bit system. People have really high expectations for an 8-bit system apparently and also they criticize uh, the characters of Tora and Shogun and the scene three and six and people complain tour is too hard and that these characters you know really don't add anything to the sh to the game i disagree with them it makes the game more of a challenge and it's a lot you know and it's some really cool interesting parts of the game that wouldn't have normally been in there and i like that i really do honestly life is all about perspective if you had never played teenage mutant ninja turtles the arcade game until i don't know the late 90s like i did you would not think as highly of the arcade game as you do Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game. I played the arcade game much later, and my impressions of it were this. It felt like you were missing a whole bunch of levels because, you know, Tora and Shogun weren't there. And also, I thought it was kind of almost too easy, because you all this, could, now you could play with two, three other people instead of just another person. So the game actually was more, ch you know, wasn't as challenging, you know, having four people playing you know, and just keep throwing quarters. I love Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 the arcade game. I give it a straight A, honestly. It paved the way for more beat-em-ups, and most of the Turtles games since then have been beat-em-ups, except the fighting games, but we'll get to that later. Up next, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, The Manhattan Project. <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, The Manhattan Project. This is a game, as a kid, I never played. I didn't even hear about this game until a couple years ago. This game came out around towards the end of the NES's lifespan. It came out in 1992. So the Super Nintendo had been around for a little bit. So of course not many people were thinking about the NES at the time, or the games. This game actually is an all new and original story. It's not based on an arcade or anything like that like the previous game was. It actually has a lot of villains from the cartoon, such as Dirtbag and Groundchuck, Leatherhead, Slash the Mutant Turtle from Dimension X. It also has some characters from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 Secret of the Ooze movie, uh, Toka and Razar, so that's pretty cool. One thing that's kind of disappointing about this game is it doesn't have, on the back of the instruction booklet, it does not have a coupon for a personal pan pizza. Though it does have some pretty cool drawings and I kind of like that. Well, let's check out the gameplay for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 The Manhattan Project. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 had some really great gameplay, including some new moves compared to the last game. For example, the jab and toss. All you had to do was press down and attack and you could literally jab and toss and throw your enemies at other enemies, which was really cool. Also, now what was very different about this game is if you hit A and B at the same time, you would do a special move, uh, 
also known as the tubular turbo attack moves. Now the upside is they t inflict a lot of damage. The downside is they also take energy away from you. For example, Leonardo had the Cyclone Sword Spin, Donatello had the Knockout Roll, Michelangelo of course had the Kangaroo Kick, and Raphael had the Power Drill Attack, which was pretty neat. This was actually a move that was best used when you only had like one little one little bar of life left because the nice thing though is if you had only one bar of life you would not lose that one bar of life no matter how many times you used uh, for example Leonardo's Cyclone Sword Spin. Another aspect I really enjoyed about this game is if you actually die you don't have to be the same turtle you can actually switch among the turtles. You might have also noticed at the startup screen well there are two different two-player options. There's a two-player A and two-player B. In one version you work together and in the other version you can actually attack each other and take life away from one another. Of course this was by no means a new concept. Double Dragon 2 actually did this as well as uh, another game, Battletoads and Double Dragon, the ultimate team. There you have it folks, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 The Manhattan Project. As much as I loved Turtles 2 the arcade game, and it was, like I said, it's still my favorite, this game is better. Honestly, it took everything from Turtles 2 and made it even better. Better game, I mean the gameplay where you can put the, where you can take the foot soldiers and, and throw them over you and actually hit other enemies, that's pretty cool. And the super move that each individual turtle has is pretty cool as well. Especially if you're down to absolutely nothing for life, you know, you can just, you know, start obliterating people with this move. And the nice thing is you don't have to worry about losing life because you won't lose any life if you have one little life left. But if you have lots of life left, you'll start draining your energy quite quickly. Overall, I give this game an A+. It's definitely, as far as NES Ninja Turtles games goes, it's the best in the franchise. we still got one more game left. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters for the NES. In the early and mid-1990s, fighting games reigned supreme. People played a lot of fighting games. They were very popular. If you had a Super NES, you would have games like this, like this, and like even like this. But what if you were one of those kids whose parents were not willing to buy you a Super NES or a Sega Genesis for that matter, and you still were playing the old NES? If you wanted to play a fighting game, you'd have to play this or this even. There were very few NES fighting games as they were, and they weren't very good, honestly. So a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fighting game? Could this even be good? Let's find out and let's check out some of the gameplay. In this game you can select up to seven characters, Leonardo, Raphael, Michelangelo, Dato, Casey Jones, Hothead, and even the Shredder. The game's single player story mode has the player taking control of the, of the four turtles, Leonardo, Raphael, Michelangelo, and Dato. As they, hold, as they hold a contest amongst themselves to see who is fit to take on Shredder's challenge. After defeating the first four opponents, including the clone of the player's character, the player proceeds to fight Casey Jones and then Hothead, a character based on Dragon Warrior from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventures comics, for the final match with Shredder. In addition to the story mode, the game also has a versus mode, one against the CPU against another the second player, as well as four player tournament mode. An option mode where players can adjust the game's difficulty continues and speed is also available. Well, what can I say about it? It's better than Karate Champ or Urban Champion, which are the only two other fighting games I own for the NES. It's, it is miles ahead of them as far as quality, as far as different moves you can perform, as far as things you can do in general. And it's got the Turtles cast, you know, so you can't beat that. This particular Turtles game looks much more adult looking than the previous Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles games for the NES. As far as a fighting game goes, well, it's certainly not better than any Super NES or Genesis fighting game by any means, but is this a game you should play on a regular basis? Probably not, but it's a very collectible item. Today it is worth about $50 actually, which is a game that's really held its value just because it came out in the later lifespan of the NES. It came out in 1993, so I wouldn't say as a game it's great, but as a collector's item it's definitely one to look out for, and if you can find it cheap I definitely recommend buying it because it's one, it's a game that the value is only going to go up on it as time goes on. If you're going to play Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters, I recommend either playing the Super NES version or the Genesis version. The Super NES version to me is the definitive version of Tournament Fighters games. Overall, I give Tournament Fighters for the NES a B-. 
like I said, it's probably the best NES fighting game I've ever played. But it is not, by any means, the best fighting game I've ever played, or tournament fighters game. It's the worst of all three tournament fighters games by far. Well, that's all the time I have today, folks. I really hope you enjoyed this review of these four classic NES Ninja Turtles games. Thanks for watching, and keep on gaming.